Hey guys, what is up and I welcome each and every one of you to a new episode of my journey to challenger in this one We're setting out diamond 2 44 LP only a few ones away from getting into promos for diamond one So that's gonna be the goal of today's episode So this channel is now sponsored by GG esports It's a free website where you place your predictions on esports games to win prizes GG esports also provides a bunch of stats to help you predict better like Bjergsen and they have weekly $100 RP giveaways on their Facebook and Twitters links down below They also have a mobile app GG Esports is also hosting a YouTube All-Stars series that will include myself, Panzer Dragon, and Gaming Curious on Team 1, and Professor Kali, Soul Renek Anoli, and GBay99 on Team 2. And active users on this website will have a chance to play with us when we face the other team. At the end of the video, I will show you guys how you place your predictions on the website, so stay tuned for that. To get into the promos now, hopefully we can do it. I feel like I'm pretty confident. I feel like we can do it. I'm gonna just spam Zed, maybe play some Talon as well here and there. Maybe pull out some Zerath or something like that, and hopefully we don't get an Evelyn literally diving me behind my tower four times in a row. But with all that being said and done, guys, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to hit that like button. But let's just jump into it. Let's get some games going, and also let's get some LP and wins. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys, the first game is about to begin. Playing Cassidy in the mid lane because they have a lot of AP damage. They have an AP top laner and an AP mid laner. Now, we're actually playing with Talon 1 on this one. Talon 1 on our team, I meant to say. Um, <laughs> fucking Talon, dude. I fucking love Talon, man. All, all right, just mute Nara already. Just don't send his calls. All right, all right, all right. Okay, that's not too bad. And then we get the kill on him regardless. Unfortunately, I just don't have TP now, which kind of sucks, but whatever. I'll take the kill. One for one. Not bad, not bad. Nice, he's dead. Good job. What? The fuck? He actually got away? Are you kidding me? That's actually ridiculous. I can't believe he got away from them. The fact that I have to burn flash to kill him there is really, really bad. I, don't, I can't stop it, dude. I really just can't stop it. If I go in, they'll just dive me. If I go in, they're just gonna straight up dive me. Like, there's no way I can... Like, Ryze will just W me and then Master Chief will just turn on his ult and go ham. And whack me to death. Like, I'm not very strong at the moment. Like, I'm still slowly stacking in all my items. Let's go, baby. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Let's carry that shit right now. An enemy has been slain. Look at this Kalen, though. Fuck. Wait, they actually lost that? Wait, how the fuck did they lose that? Does Zach, did Zach just completely lose them in the fight? Zach, wait, Zach threw Singed into me? Okay, and then this Singed flip him after? All we have to do is kill Master G, kill you in these fights, and we're, we win. Straight up. Like, I don't know how, how you deal with this Master G, like, team fighting is the best way, but like, he's not bad in team fights, but he's also very good in split pushing, like, I can probably run away from him, but that's about it. Oh, I don't know. Dude, we're just dying one by one, man. We're, we're literally just dying solo, over and over. I, I, I actually can't do anything in these fights. Like, legit. Like, it's so hard to do anything in these fights. Actually, maybe it's not over there. He didn't get him. Fuck, he didn't get the rise. If he got the rise there, maybe we would've won. I don't get it. They lost so many fights that, like, I just should not have lost. They're, like... 
I, I'm, I'm actually so confused. There was a fight top lane. Kaylin was in there and Ryze was in there. It was a 4v3 in our favor and they lost because apparently Zach ultied the Singe to our back lane. All right, guys, game number two is about to begin. We have Mr. Maokai uh, starting some a little bit of a uh, little bit of beef over here, it seems like. But either way, game two in the beginning, playing Zed against, it looks like, a Galio in the mid lane. I'm a little bit upset from last game. It felt so hard to do anything with my lead. Like, I had the lead, I could split push, but I never had the chance to split push because Rakan, apparently, apparently, I don't, I don't see exactly what happened, but based on what I've, I, I heard, Rakan or, uh, Rakan either got caught or Zach would do some really bad ults. Where he would like take their front line, like the like the E or the Singe, and bring it to our back line, and it's like, oh, okay. Like instead of just, just don't even put him anywhere, just literally prop it, like, go up in the air like that. Okay, you know, that's all you have to do. Nice. That's all I have to do, man. Get, just land that nice CC. I'll just I'll I'll full combo that ass real quick with ignite. Dead. Good bite to you. I want to keep my ward on the bot side because I want to play towards bot side. Bot side is a lot stronger here. Yeah, this game should be free. The only person that has anything on their team right now is the Kane. Everyone else on this team is straight up inting. Kogma Lulu is winning ball in, which is just fantastic because Kogma Lulu is one of the strongest late game comps or like like double like bot lane or whatever you want to call them. So this game is completely in our hands to throw now. So kind of like last game almost. But last game we were never really ahead. It just looked like we we're ahead. I don't think we were actually ever ahead. really really ahead. I went in a little to hand there. We're going way to him. Holy fuck. Okay, well, they're dead. Lol. <laughs> okay, Kogma. Kogma! Hey, if there's anyone that can kill a champion like fucking Galio or even Kane. Oh, it's definitely a Kogma. Like, that's the thing with Kogma Lulu. Like, if it ever gets to this point, it's so fucking hard to deal with. Like, it's so hard to deal with that. The thing with Kane is, like, I just don't see Kane being a hard carry champion. Like, he's a good champion if your team's doing well, but Kane. I just don't see Kane hard carrying game. I don't know why. He just doesn't seem like a hard carry champion. Only if you go blue Kane. Red Kane is not a hard carry champion, but he is very good if your team's doing like decently. Unfortunately, his team's just straight into. Okay, we're at 51 points. Okay, okay, okay. Not bad. All right, guys. Game number three is about to begin. Unfortunately, we ended up getting autofill for this one, so we ended up resorting to the Lulu. I mean, you know, if we've learned anything from before, my Lulu Tom Kench support is pretty clean. I'm not gonna risk anything stupid. I knew he was gonna come boss up, but I don't think he'll come from river. I thought he killed gank, it'll be through here. But he ended up ganking through up here. GG. This game is GG. This game is fucking so done. This is to get this tower, of course. No. And actually, you can probably solo. We just, yeah, no, this game is done. This game is just done. Like, there's just no way they come back from this. That's, it'll be so hard. Later. Just finish it, finish it. This game is GG. This game is fucking so done. This is, get this tower, of course. No. And actually, you can probably solo. We just, yeah, no, this game is done. All right, guys, and probably the final game of this episode is about to begin playing Zed in the mid lane against a Katarina. Now, if we learned my lesson from last time, going for bone playing against Katarina is going to be spicy. And it's going to help a lot. What's up, girl? What's up, girl? All right, let's go. That's, that's a good kill. Good kill. Good, good, good level one invade team. Good level one invade. Unfortunately, I don't really get anything from that. I get 25 gold. I mean, I'll take the 25 gold. Oh! 
Oh, what HP, baby! Get me the fuck out. Nice, I got the assist. Perfect. That's not bad. That's not bad. Unfortunately, Ivern got the kill. I feel like Ivern is the worst of the three to get the kill. I wouldn't mind if Varus got it, but I don't know. I don't really like Ivern getting it, though. It's okay. It's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> fucking shields, baby. Shields for fucking days. So fucking hate Ivan. Oh god. What? Alright, well, you're done. Lol, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Fuck man, we fought that without me, man. We gotta, we gotta wait, man. We gotta wait. I was, I was about to push in mid, you know, get some pressure there, and then go here. Oh, come on, man. I mean, I kept the backline so busy there. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a kill. I feel like if I played a little bit better, I could have, but oh well. Okay, nice. I have ult. I'm gonna just ult the I mean, I almost have ult. Well, oh, okay, this is actually kind of bad. It's so hard to do anything. I I I can't do anything in these fights. Like we have no damage. All right, guys. And the final game of this episode is about to begin. Now, this is also going to be another episode or a game rather where I kind of just go over it, you know, with commentary and whatnot. I'll try to make this actually a bit more constructive rather than before, where apparently it wasn't constructive enough. I do apologize for that one. But either way, we're playing Talon in this one now. As I'm sure you guys saw, you know, I did lose a bunch of games for uh, before this game. Uh, in my opinion, all of them should have been wins. They were all thrown. Every single one of them was a thrown game by myself, my team, and any combination of the two, right? So I ended up actually stopping. Uh, I stopped playing, and then I came back and I played some more. Uh, with I played two games with uh, Nidhogg, you know, Eric. You guys know him. I chill with him IRL. He's in my vlogs and here and there. And he was down to play. You know, it was like 3 a.m. He was down to play because he just woke up. I'm like, you know what? I want my LP back. I'm down to play. We're like, okay, so we played two games. This is the second one here. I'm Oh, it's just oh, it's just disgusting. So we go for the invade. Honestly, nothing happens here. So we're just gonna go ahead and skip right past it. Now, so they ended up banning my Zed. The Fiora ended up banning my Zed because she was in our last game, and I picked Talon instead because I just want to start playing these guys more often because I just think they're my personal type of champions, and I can do really well with them. They have a lot of snowball and kind of carry potential. Now, in these kind of matchups uh, against someone like Ari, I actually really enjoy sort of pushing in the wave. Now, I don't push it in level one, but what I do here is I actually let her push it in. Right, it goes to my tower pretty early. Now that also means that since the tower, uh, waves are on my tower that early, that by around level 3, it'll actually go back to her tower if I push it in fast, right? And we're purposely doing this because I know uh, my duo, obviously the jungler, wants to invade. So I purposely push in this tower, uh, to her tower here, you can see, boom, get all the CS and whatnot. Hit level 3, and then he's calling out for the Hecarim, he's saying the Hecarim's probably down here somewhere. So I'm like, okay, I push it in, and that's how roaming down, and before, you know, we you know, we end up getting the first blood on Hecarim, right? So th really small things like that uh, are very effective, and that's what Talon's really good at, because he can just hop over walls. So now I go back to mid lane, nothing really too much happens here, super, super top, or pushing top, super, super 
hard. So I end up just roaming top, which is what Talon excels at. He can go behind wards since I can just go kind of, you know, through the jungle like this where they most likely don't have any wards yet. And then right to top lane I go. So if any lane's ever overextending with Talon, it's just throwing the W, pushing the wave ASAP and just get the roams going, which is why I like to get uh, boosted mobility very, very early on. So, so far we're sitting at 3-3 or 2-0 with 33 CS. And uh, essentially I have a decent amount of gold. So I want to try maybe, you know, roaming or doing something. And, you know, maybe put more pressure in the jungle or something like that, right? Because that's what Talon does, right? Push in the wave, maybe go top, maybe go bot, maybe go through the jungle, get some wards down, clear some wards, or whatever. In this case, again, push in mid. End up roaming down to the bot lane. That's the kill on the Janna here. Ult, just to get away from the situation. And we get some nice kills. Really nice Jin W snipe there. Ended up getting the kill on the Hecarim. I can't remember if that was Magnite. No, it was not passive. Getting the kill on the Hecarim with the passive. And at least just barely getting the kill on Ezreal there. So, so far the score is 2-8. to eight. I'm 3-0-2 and he's 3-1-2. So, you can see that the dual queue action here is really paying off, right? Like, we're really just taking the game in, just completely in our control, right? We both mess up with Hecarim's pathing a lot. We're both roaming out to the same place. And I can follow and like make the roams happen very nicely too because I, I'm playing Talon. That's what Talon is very good at. So a little bit of fight happens here, you know, I tell him that I'm on my way, you know, we can go for the Hecarim here, we try to begin the kill, but the Fiora is obviously the only person on their team that's actually strong, right? She's 3 and 1, she is fairly strong, so you gotta respect her, and a Fiora is a champion that can definitely 1v5, so you don't want to get her any kills, so end up, you know, just not being a little bit too greedy there, peacing out, but then I'm like, you know, I'm thirsty for the kills, man, I'm thirsty for the kills, I know Hecarim's gonna come farm this, I don't remember how I knew, but I had something about the way he moved, told me he's gonna come and farm this, so I ended up going to check the Gromp, and he was actually doing it, so I ended up just getting a nice kill there as well. And now the goal is obviously to look at what to do next, right? So what do we what do we look at? We look at the dragon. Okay, well, dragon's not up. It's probably not up for quite some time. Baron's not up yet as well. You know, 17 minutes, still three more minutes on that thing. So what do you do? You push out the waves, right? You see there's a big ass wave top lane. You see there's a big ass wave ball lane. You want to push out those waves ASAP because having the waves in your control and pushing to the enemy team gives you a lot more vision. Or not vision, sorry. It gives you well, it does give you vision, but also gives you more kind of potential to run around the map and get control of the map and get wards down and whatnot. And especially as someone like Talon. It gives me much more kind of, it makes me feel more free to run into the jungle and look for picks, right? Which is why you can see here, I have a control ward, I have the sweeper, I have the dust blade proc as well. Very, very strong, right? Gives me a lot of control, a lot of vision control. So I can hide in the jungle and look for picks. So here, we end up just literally circling around and getting the kill on her. Pretty free stuff. So here, obviously, I want to, I really want to get this tower, right? And I mean, there's only three people uh, trying to defend this because obviously Pharaoh's dead, the comes down bot. So I end up going for a flank here, waiting for an opportunity because they're really like in a bad situation here. They can't go back because I'm there. And the second one person oversteps, which in this case the Janet did, a little too far away from her tower. I end up just full comboing her. The W, Q, mid W, or sorry, W, Q, and then mid Q, you ult, and then it just, it's a really, really fast combo. The only bad thing about that combo is you have to make sure you get the kill and get out because you use your ultimate instantly, both parts of it, instantly. Uh, you don't actually stay invisible with that combo, but it's also the fastest combo with Talon. So, all in all, you know, just trying to get the picks wherever we can, and they actually ended up surrendering. So, I'm a little bit surprised they did. I felt like the game, honestly, even though it's 33 to 1, it really wasn't over just yet. I mean, they are, a lot of people are inting, but I honestly don't think it was straight up over yet. All in all, this game just kind of shows, you know what, all you really have to do is just get a lot of pressure. Just just do your thing, just get a lot of pressure in the game. Constantly roam, especially if you're playing with a duo jungler that's very strong early, just constantly roam. Just put pressure in the jungle, just go to bot, go to top, you know, get the kills, get the towers, and, you know, get the rotations going and all that stuff. And then just continue that. So with Talon, you know, get the mobility with the uh, boots of mobility and the Yomus, of course, and fingers crossed for a Cloud Dragon. And you just run around the map. You push in the wave with W, you clears it really fast, run to the map, get a lot of wards, get control wards, get your sweeper, get your dust blade, get vision in the enemy jungle, and just Wait for people as well and maybe you know people that are going to come in there to maybe get the red buff or they'll walk through that area maybe like the janitor ward you gotta like kind of predict this thing and kind of think ahead of them more like you know kind of like chess if you will as an assassin and get those picks which is very important 55 lp is the ending uh, lp for this game so so now I'll show you guys very quickly how you bet using GG Esports. So first you want to go to the section that you want to bet on. So in my case, LCS North America and click on a game that you want to bet on. So in this case, let's do Team Solo Mid versus Golden Guardians. So click on this button right here, the prediction one, and you can pretty much predict whichever way you want, whether you want to just predict who wins the game, who wins the game plus first blood, and many other options. Once you decide which team wins, you will go ahead and click on the team, in this case TSM, and bet exactly what you want. So in this case, I'll bet 1 million of the in-game, I guess, currency or the website currency and press confirm and it really is that simple once it processes it it'll give you our estimate as how much you'll get back if you win and that's it guys it's really that simple so check it out it's completely free to play and you'll have a chance to win prizes as well link is down below check it out hope you guys enjoyed this episode hope you enjoyed this kind of analytical commentary if you did definitely hit that like button but thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you for the next one peace